Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Minecraft Disney World. This week we're headed back to the Magic Kingdom and we're taking a look at a very important and historical attraction. Uh, it's in Tomorrowland. It is currently called Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Now it wasn't always called Car Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. It used to be just called The Carousel of Progress. And uh, like the Haunted Mansion, which I've covered a couple of weeks ago, this is an attraction that is really important because there's so much rich history to it that very closely involves Walt Disney himself. And this is a ride that has a very unique history. Um, well, the Haunted Mansion was unique in that it was something that was sort of planned for Disney World, even though its history was in Disneyland and with Walt. Um, and so there's sort of a mirroring there. But here there's a direct connection. So uh, just to the fact that the Carousel of Progress wasn't made for Disney originally, then it became a, an attraction installed in Disneyland, and then it was moved over to Disney World. So this ride has seen a lot of changes, and it's seen a lot of homes, and um, I'd love to talk about all of that. So let's dive right in. So Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress, let's uh, frame it with some context. So... Walt originally had wanted to create these two areas to the um, the Magic Kingdom's Main Street uh, in Disneyland, and they would be called International Street and Edison Square. And you can, in that already, sort of see like the very vague uh, seeds of what would become International Street would eventually become World Showcase of Epcot. And uh, Edison Square had actually become the Carousel of Progress. And the idea is, uh, in Edison Square, guests would be shown this host, uh, like the show hosted by this electro-mechanical man named Wilbur K. Watt. And the whole theme of the attraction and show was going to be about how the invention of electricity, the, you know, the harnessing of electricity and all of the devices that we've created with it, that use it, how they've um, sort of improved life in America and in the world. And he ended up not doing that uh, for cost reasons and space reasons and, you know, all sorts of uh, reasons. Now, what ended up happening was he approached General Electric for this. Plans fell through. Life goes on. Uh, later on, for the 1964 World Fairs, General Electric approached Walt and wanted him to develop a show for their uh, GE Pavilion at the World's Fair in New York. And... Uh, this, to, to Walt, was an, a reason to go back and, you know, uh, have a relationship again with GE and to, like, really re revisit this Edison Square concept. And so what he did is he created this show that would become the Carousel of Progress. And um, the ride itself is actually more of a theater show. It's um, four scenes with like a beginning scene and an end scene, so it's really six, with a rotating theater. So rather than moving from theater to theater for each scene, the whole area would rotate around the stage, and so the people would move instead of the actors. And the actors would all be audio-animatronic figures, which sort of, in a way, is um, very symbolic, not just for the fact that it's practical, but the idea that this whole, the whole theme of this is how technology is making tomorrow better. And now you have this you know, a uh, stage show that's run by robotic people. Um, it was a ride that's seen many updates. It was updated five times in 67, 75, 81, 85, 1993. It's had two different theme songs, um, both of them by the Sherman Brothers. Um, a lot of sources, none confirmed, um, say that this was Walt Disney's favorite attraction and he that he said it should never cease operation. Um, there are family and friends who sort of back this up. There's no official, you know, him on the record saying this, but uh, he, this was, I mean, it's distinct because technically it is the only ride in Walt Disney World that Walt Disney actually touched himself, you know, physically was involved in. Um, because when they moved this from the World Fair to Disneyland and then Disney World, they literally packed things up and shipped them over. So it wasn't like they were just recreating it. So uh, he gets this um, voice actor, Rex Allen, to play the father. And the idea is it's this family throughout the century uh, talking about all of the new inventions that they have thanks to electricity. And because this was sponsored, it was, you know, thanks to General Electric products, so GE stoves and refrigerators and vacuum cleaners and just everything GE offered, you know, how much it made life better. And it actually takes place throughout the course of 
a calendar year over the course of a century, by which I mean each scene is in a different season during a different holiday. So you start off in Valentine's Day early in February, and then you go to the 4th of July, and the third scene's Halloween, and then it ends off at Christmas. So you see, you know, the whole of a, a calendar year, but it takes place in different decades. Um, Walt Disney, he had Richard Sherman and Robert Sherman, the two brothers who are famous for a lot of memorable uh, songs such as It's a Small World to come up with a song that would bridge the different scenes and he wanted a you know song that really encapsulated the uh, enthusiasm that Walt had for the future and it was called There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow and the Shermans later went on to say that they believed that the song was Walt's theme song because it was just so optimistic it's, it's exciting about you know the future and technology and how much it's going to make life better and that's really sort of what Walt went after so it very much did represent him and uh, there's a little confusion but that was actually the, f the original theme song to the, uh, the Carousel of Progress it was later changed and then it was later changed back but that was the first song and it is now the current song um, the idea is at the World's Fair at the end of this show that sort of went through the year, people would be able to go up to a second floor and there was something called uh, General Electric Sky Dome Spectacular and it projected images of nature and energy onto this domed roof, um, kind of like a planetarium. And it showed all the way that GE was using electricity and the power of the sun um, to help customers with better products. Um, and then eventually, and this was really smart on Walt's part, a lot of the deals he had with these companies for the World Fair involved him getting to keep these rides when the fair was over, and he would ship them back to Disneyland and add them to Disneyland. And so they were essentially rides that he got to develop on someone else's dime and then later put in Disneyland, uh, which was very clever. And that's exactly what he did, and it reopened in Disneyland. Um, in 1967, on July 2nd, as part of New Tomorrowland, uh, it was a little different. Rather than going to this Sky Dome, they would go to a second level, and uh, there was a four-minute post-show with the mother and the father from the actual show, and it showed Progress City, and Progress City was this enormous, massive model, scale model city of the future that Walt uh, was working on, and it was the original concept of Epcot, the experimental prototype community of tomorrow, and uh, people got to take a look at it, and it was fantastic and at that time it went on and a lot of people saw it and it got a little old and by 1973 the um the attendance was so low that they decided to close it but rather than just getting rid of it breaking it down they decided to ship it over to walt disney world so it was packed up for florida including the progress city model but only parts of it were sent over to Florida, and you can actually see those on the People Mover today. And it opened on January 15th, 1975, along with Space Mountain. Um, because they were changing times and the ride was feeling a little stale, this is when the second theme song came in, and it was um, specifically asked to be written a certain way by GE. This is the funny way that sort of sponsorship work GE didn't like the idea of uh, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow because it put emphasis of how great things are going to be in the future and GE didn't want people specifically their customers waiting until the great big beautiful tomorrow to buy GE products they wanted a focus on now how now is great and how now is the time to get these great products from GE so they wrote a song called now is the time uh, sometimes it's called the best time of your life um, and it's a focus on how you know Now's the best time of your life. Best time to get your GE products. Uh, it was very peppy, but it wasn't, you know, it was no great big beautiful tomorrow. They got new uh, actors for the show when they upgraded it, and they did a few changes to the scenery of each show. But more or less, it stayed the same. The big thing that they would update is the last one, because the last one was supposed to be contemporary and show off the future. And so every time they update it, usually the major updates go to this last scene. Um... But on March 10th, 1985, GE's contract expired. They chose not to renew. Times were changing, um, you know, and 
for many other reasons, GE might just not have wanted that sponsorship to continue. So they closed the ride very shortly, and they just took out as many references to General Electric as they could, because, hey, if they're not paying the bill, they don't get the advertisement. So no longer was it a GE stove or a GE fridge. It was just a stove and a fridge. If you're very, if you're very keen and you pay attention, you can see a few references to GE that they still left in there. I don't know if they were forgotten or purposely left, but you could see a few GE logos. Um, and it was reopened. Um, and it was set up. It kept going. And then in August 1993, it was refurbed again. And it was more of an exterior refurbishment. They, re- re- they were redoing Tomorrowland uh, into New Tomorrowland. And the concept of New Tomorrowland, rather than the world of tomorrow, was the future that never was. It was sort of embracing this 1950s idea of the future. And so there were, like, gears and other, you know, uh, symbol- symbolic... Uh, aesthetic references put on the ride to sort of fit the theme of Tomorrowland better. Uh, They actually ended up getting a new cast again. They got Gene Shepard, who is famous for playing the narrator in A Christmas Story, to do the voice of Father. And uh, it's funny, they got Rex Allen, who was the original voice of the Father, to play the grandfather in the last scene of the show during Christmas. So he's back in there. And then they replaced Now is the Time with the original There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow is sort of, you know, a contemporary version of it. Um, but it's back in there. And there are some cosmetic changes, minor stuff. They always do minor stuff. Like they replaced the um, big tube screen television in the last scene with a HD TV just to sort of keep it on the edge of being in the future. And so that's um, more or less, that's the carousel of progress. It's got a big history. Walt was super into it. I mean, People talk about stories of how he would go on set and he was had very particular ideas of how each scene should play out. You know, the this actually, even though it's using animatronics, holds the record for the longest running stage show in American history because it plays, you know, every few minutes every day for years and years and years. And that's what you could do with robot actors. Uh, there's a lot of uh, references and hints to this ride outside of the ride. For instance, Horizons in Epcot, which was a ride that was around for uh, about over a decade in Epcot, has always been considered sort of the spiritual sequel to Carousel of Progress because it featured once again this family that was going through the future and experiencing the perks of living in the future. And so it had that sort of similar theme. It was never explicitly considered um, to be the same family, but, you know, there was just this idea that, you know, it was... It was more or less the same thing. It was the sequel, if you want to call it that. And then even outside that, there are references. For instance, uh, if you've ever seen Iron Man 2, Tony Stark, Iron Man, has this thing called the Stark Expo. And the Stark Expo is essentially a fictional version of the 1964 World's Fair, just, I guess, taking place in the contemporary times. It takes place in the same place, with it, which is fr- uh, Flushing Meadows Park in Queens, New York, which... Um, is a great place you can still go today and you can still see a lot of old remnants from the World's Fair. Uh, And actually, if you go to the website for the Stark Expo, which I unfortunately don't know off the top of my head, but if you Google it, there's like a fake website set up for this expo. You can see the Carousel of Progress building uh, as the Kodak Pavilion. And on top of that, um, I don't know if it's in the movie, but it's also on the website. There's a theme song for the Stark Expo called Make Way for Tomorrow Today. And that was actually written by Richard Sherman, one of the two Sherman brothers who wrote There's a Great Big Beautiful Tomorrow. And so while they're not the same thing, they sound very similar. And they just have that same, you know, Sherman Brothers sound to it. In any case, that's been the Carousel of Progress. It's not an exciting ride, but if you're in Disney World, You should definitely ride it. I know I say that with every ride, but you have to understand that there's more to this ride than just being a source of entertainment or a source of a 20-minute nap. This is a ride that has, like, a lot of rich history with Walt Disney and Disneyland and Disney World. And uh, the fact that it's still running is just a testament to the company's um, goals of keeping Walt's vision in line. I mean, Walt died so many decades ago, and... Yet this ride still exists, even though it isn't exciting. It isn't, you know, the sort of thing that'll sell a ticket to the parks. But it's there because it's history and because it wouldn't be Disney World without it. And hopefully it'll never leave. And 
The big debate is whether it should ever be updated again or if it should be left, left as is so it can be as close to a representation of Walt's ride as possible. Because after, after all, when they reopened it later on in the 90s, they renamed it from the Carousel of Progress to Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress because they felt he had such an involvement with the creation of this ride that um, his name had to be in it somewhere. In any case, whatever you're doing this week, I hope you have a great one. Please make the most of it because it makes everything better. And I hope to see you all here next week for the next episode of Minecraft Disney World. Bye, everyone.